Amen. Well, good morning, everybody. How y'all doing today? Amen. Isn't it good to be in church again? Amen. Amen. God is so good. He is so good. And I am so grateful to be in the midst. I'm so grateful to be in the building today. I want to welcome all of our BBCC family who is here in person with us, as well as those folks who are joining us online. You know, we are blessed with the technology to be able to broadcast and share the gospel of Jesus Christ to people all over the all over the globe, really. And we are just so grateful for that. Folks have, you know, been here from what is it, the Netherlands, I think it was, and you know, different states all throughout the US. We are just so grateful for that, how God is using this little old church and little old us to reach people and to be a blessing. But today we're gonna have an awesome service, y'all. I am truly excited about what God's going to do. We're in the midst of our current sermon series entitled By Faith, and and God is building our faith. You know, we've come this far by faith. We're going to get to the end by faith, and I believe that the good work that God began, he's going to bring it forward to completion. So we're going to get started with worship this morning. Uh, We got some folks that are going to come up and lead us in prayer, and also some are going to read the scripture. Our praise and worship team is going to lead us in worship this morning as well. So we are looking forward to what God is going to do. Um, And I believe that Sister Maddie is going to lead us in prayer first. Uh, The praise and worship team is going to come. And then uh, Sister Fanny is going to come and read the scripture as well. Uh, So God bless you. Uh, Let's welcome them as they come. And let's have an awesome time, y'all. Amen. First, I'd just like to thank God for my space in the building. Haven't been here in a while, and we know that um, our whole world has changed. Um, and um, there's just been so many changes, and people say getting back to normal, but we don't know what getting back to normal is going to look like, and we don't know when that's going to happen. But one thing we can trust is that our God is faithful. And we can trust God, you know, to be there in every situation, no matter what goes on. Uh, So let me uh, bow our heads and let's go to the throne of grace. Dear God, we just come right now, oh God. We just want to thank you for your grace and your mercy, Lord. We just want to thank you for your powerful hand in every situation in this troubled world. And we just thank you for taking care of us, watching over us, and bringing us safely back to church again. We know that the church left the building, Lord, but you didn't leave. You walked right beside us. You was with us every step of the way. And for that, we thank you, Lord. Now, God, we just want to pray a special blessing on our pastor today. Pray, oh God, that he will bring what you have placed in his heart for us. And then we pray, oh God, that we will grasp something, even if it's just one word that we can hold on to, that will keep us continuing on in this journey, Lord. And that we will hide it in our hearts, Lord, and we will meditate on it. And we will continue to walk this walk. Now, oh God, I just want to pray for the the school system, the kids, for their safety. It's just so much going on in this world, Lord. But we know that you are our hedge of protection. And you have a fence built all around us, Lord. And whatever we need, we can come to you, Lord. When we can't talk to nobody else, Lord, we can take a moment and just stop and just talk to you, God. You won't tell nobody about our situation, but you'll be right there in the midst, Lord. I just thank you so much, Lord, that through the trials and the tribulations, mm, you said you would never leave us nor forsake us. And I thank you so much that I can hold on to that word, Lord, when everything else is crumbling around me, everything else is falling and coming. Woo, Jesus. You feel like you can't make it another step, Lord. I just thank you that you're there. 
I can feel you move. I can feel you in the wind. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. I thank you right now, Jesus. Mm. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you for your son, Jesus, that died on the cross to give us a chance to have the right to spend eternity with you. So now, Lord, I just thank you. I praise you. I love you, Lord. Just be in the midst of this service, Lord. These and all blessings I ask in your precious, ever-loving name. Amen. Good morning, church. Y'all ready to lift him up this morning? Hallelujah. All right, y'all don't sound like it. Y'all ready to lift him up this morning? <laughs> Just the fact that you made it is a blessing. So let's just praise him and worship him today. Amen. God bless you. I want to clap a little louder than before. I want to sing a little louder than before. Oh, I want to jump a little higher than before. Somebody shout louder than before. Come on and say. I want to sing a little louder than before. I want to spin a wilder than before. Somebody shout louder than before. Hallelujah. Come on and say. Freedom. 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 My hands higher than before. I want to worship deeper than before. Lord, I got to love you more than before. Somebody shout louder than before. Hallelujah. Come on and say. Praise break time, huh? Hallelujah. 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 Lord, just say, set me free. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, you're good. Lord, you're mighty. Lord, you're provider. Hallelujah. 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 
Come on, somebody give us some praise in this place. We are free indeed. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Good morning, church. I'm glad to be here with you all today. And I am happy to read the word coming from God, which will be coming from Hebrew chapter 11, verses 8 through 12. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to a place that he was to receive as an inheritance. And he went out not knowing where he was going. By faith, he went to live in the land of promise, as in a foreign land, living in tents with Isaac and Jacob, heirs with him of the same promise. For he was looking forward to the city that had foundation, whose designer and builder is God. By faith, Sarah herself received power to conceive, even when she was past the age since she considered him faithful who had promised. Therefore, from one man and him as good as dead were born descendants as many as the stars of heaven and as many as the innumerable grains of sand by the seashore. Praise the Lord, church. Well, now, I didn't mention it. It feels kind of dead in here this morning. I'm not quite sure why. So if you don't mind, can you stand up on your feet, get the blood flowing a little bit in your body? Because God is good, amen? Amen. amen. This next song we're going to sing is called Worth. And he thought we were worth it, but he's worth m much more than we are, amen? So we're going to stand. We're going to give him praise. We're going to push through. Because I know we don't always feel like it. I know we may have had a rough week, a rough morning, a rough month, a rough year and a half since this COVID thing started, but God is so worthy, y'all. So we're going to praise him this morning and give him all we have, and we're going to fake it till we make it. I don't like that saying, but it's true sometimes. You got to push through, okay? So y'all just worship with us as we sing work, uh, Worthy. Glory to your name, God. Whoa. 
touch the spirit, but the Lord is just speaking to my heart right now. And I've been thinking about all the times that I failed him, all the times I messed up. But he did it anyway. <laughs> he went to the cross anyway. Knowing that I wouldn't get it right, knowing I would mess up, knowing I would have to repent over and over, he did it anyway. And I just bless your name, God. Because you didn't have to do it, Lord God, but you did. You did it anyway, God. You saw value when people don't see value. They step on us, Lord God. They treat us any old kind of way, God. But you gave your life, Jesus, and we thank you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God. We can't even understand the price that you paid, Lord God. You did it anyway, God. I thank you for doing it in spite of me, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. You did it anyway, God. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. How many of y'all know there is power in your press? You see, we came to church this morning and it was a little chilly outside and we came this morning with different things going on in our lives, but you pressed your way. And, and I believe when we press our way to Jesus, we'll never leave the same. You see, I believe the Lord is smiling right now and he's enjoying our company and we are enjoying his company and I've learned at the times where I feel the least like being with him the times I feel the least worthy when I press my way that's where my breakthrough comes that's where my change comes that's where my growth comes that's where my worship comes to a whole new place so we worship you Lord and we give you glory Lord we give you the honor, God. We bow before you, Lord. God, we say thank you, Lord. We don't deserve it. We didn't earn it. But you love us the same. In spite of us, you love us. In spite of us, you bless us. In spite of us, you provide for us. In spite of us, Lord, you said even when we are not faithful, you remain faithful because you can't deny yourself. So we thank you for your faithfulness. God, we lift our hands in worship because you are worthy. And if you never did another thing, you've already done enough. If this was our last day on this earth, Lord, we want to give you our best. All we can control is this moment. So we give you praise and we give you glory. And God, as we get ready to transition, we get ready to hear what you want to say through the spoken word. We thank you for the written word. We thank you for the finished work. And we pray for the manifestation of your promises in our lives. 
we pray, Lord, that just as it is in heaven, it will be here in the earth realm. That you will release your power. You will release your strength. You will release your grace. Allow us to be ambassadors for you. Speak now, God, to your people that we would know what you want us to know and be who you called us to be. Father, this is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Amen. Let's give God a hand clap of praise real quick, y'all. Amen. Amen. It has just been such a blessing to worship this morning. Such a blessing to be in the presence of the Lord together with the saints, the family. And we are just so grateful. So grateful for this time. Well, we're going to do our best to jump into the word this morning. I don't know about you, but I think the Lord's already spoken a few things. And I know I believe he's already ministered to our spirits. But the good part is there's a little bit more. There's a little bit more. He's not done yet. So I'm excited about preaching today. Uh, we're going to be picking up our series, kind of where we left off last week, where we began a brand new sermon series entitled By Faith. By Faith. And today, I want to talk about the obedience of faith. I want to talk about the obedience of faith. We're going to touch on Abraham. We're going to touch on Sarah. Uh, and we're going to look at this thing. And God gave Abraham a promise, right? We understand that God gave Abraham a promise. But Abraham had to do something, didn't he? It wasn't just, here comes the promise, and you sit back and get in a lazy boy and chill out, and the promise is going to come. No, Abraham had to leave where he was at. I think Shauna preached a couple years back about into the unknown, and and this whole concept of you got to step out from where you are to be where God called you to be. So, So as we look at this thing, following instructions is not the easiest thing, is it? It is not the easiest thing. And, and you know, I, I tend to get, uh, you buy something, and most of us, we ignore the instructions. We think we know how to put it together. We end up with 14 extra screws, nuts, and bolts, and wonder why it doesn't work. But the thing about it is when God gives us an instruction, we've got, he gives us a, 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 a promise, we've got to follow his instructions by faith. And, but it's not easy, is it? And, and the thing is, sometimes God, or, or you'll get instructions in life, And as you look here, right, you see some instruction was given. And you can imagine, you look on that cake, it says, thanks for a great year in purple. Uh, You know, it's kind of like you had one job, right? You had one job. One job was was to say, you know, thanks for a great year and write it in purple. But the person literally put in purple on the cake. See, following instructions is not as easy as it sounds. It's not as easy as it sounds. What about... Uh, this kid here in, in school, they were instructed to find the difference between eight and six. This is a math problem, a word problem. And, and, and this kid, right, they're smart, you know, the creative and all that stuff. They said eight, eight is all curly, but six, six is not, six is not. See, following instructions, it's not as easy as it sounds. It's, it's not as easy as it sounds. Well, then you look at his text message exchange, and and they said, hey, what's your street name? What's your street name? And they responded, Lil Marco, throwing up gang signs and claiming sets, right? I'm Lil Lil Marco. And they said, hey, you you live on a street name, Lil Marco? Oh, you meant my actual address, address, right? Obedience and following instructions is not as easy as as it sounds. So our brother Abraham, Abraham, who's in the hall of faith, he's in the hall of faith. He, he had to really obey and follow what God called him to do. You see, the thing about Abraham, Abraham, he had enough faith to follow God's instruction. And because he had enough faith to follow the instruction, he received God's blessing. And you and I must recognize that faith there is some assembly required. There is some, there is some obedience that we must do. There are some steps that we must take if we are going to see the promise fulfilled in our lives. I don't know about you, but there are things I'm believing God for. There are things I'm believing God for in my family, things I'm believing God for in ministry, things I believe God for in my health, right? But there are some things that I got to do. 
And God will always give you a promise that's bigger than you, and it will be bigger than what you have, and some assembly will be required. But let me give you the bottom line before we really dig into this concept of what obedient faith looks like. The bottom line is that obedient faith is going to cost you something. Obedient faith will cost you something. It costs Abraham something. Everything that I've wanted in my life that God put in my heart to do, guess what? It cost me something. It's going to cost you something, but it's worth the price of admission. It is worth the price of admission. Now I want to reread the, the text here uh, that, 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 that was read earlier. I want to, want to revisit it real quick. In Hebrews chapter 11, verse 8 says this. It says, by faith. Somebody say, by faith. By faith. See, by faith, Abraham did what he obeyed. When he was called to go out to a place that he was to receive an inheritance. And he went out with a full script. He went out knowing exactly where it was. He went out knowing exactly what he needed to do. Noah said he went out not knowing where he was going. And we like to say in many circles, you better than me. Right? You better than me. But, but Abraham went out by faith and obeyed, not knowing all of the answers. But then it says, by faith, he went to live in the land of promise as in a foreign land, living in mansions, living with air condition, living with a, with a, a live in chef. No, it says living in tents. Uh, wives, y'all looking like baby. No, 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 no. We, we not living in no tent. I can see Sarah right now. You want to go live where? But he says living in tents with Isaac and Jacob, heirs with him of the same promise. It says, for he was looking forward, forward, forward to the city that has foundations, whose designer and builder is God. You see, we must recognize that when we walk by faith and obedience, we must keep looking forward to the promise that God has already said. It says, by faith, Sarah herself received power to conceive, even when she was past age. And, she, and since she considered him faithful, who had promise. So Sarah considered God faithful, and Abraham was looking forward to the promise. Therefore, from one man and him as good as dead were born descendants as many as the stars of heaven and as many as the innumerable grains of the sand by the seashore, by one man. We must recognize that by faith, by, by you, you can change your generation. By you, you can change your neighborhood. By you, you can change your city. By one man, God brought us to pass, but that one man paid the price of obedience, and he walked by faith. So Abraham gets this promise from God, and we're going to talk about that here in a second. And what, happens, what had happened was God gave Abraham a trailer of his future. In other words, a preview, right? He gave him a trailer, but he didn't provide the script or the schedule. So in other words, God tells Abraham, I'm going to do something, but he doesn't tell him when, and he doesn't tell him all of the details. If you look in Genesis 12, it says this, this is the promise that God gave to Abraham. He says, and I will make you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great so that you will be a blessing. He says, I will bless those who bless you. And him who dishonors you, I will curse. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. I don't know about you, but I kind of want that kind of promise for my life. That sounds real good, doesn't it? So he gives him the trailer. He says, this is what's going to happen. But he doesn't tell him all of the other details. He doesn't give him all of the obstacles. He doesn't give him everything going on. And the thing is, if we recognize all the stuff that Abraham had to go through, right, he had roadblocks. You see, there was uncertainty. Abraham wasn't young. He wasn't 25 just out of college. Abraham was an old man. He's ready to, he's like ready to pack it in and retire and go and, and sit in a lawn chair. And God comes and tells him, you're going to do, I'm going to do something great through you. You're going to have children. And Abraham's like, me? You know, he, but when in the midst of this, he's got uncertainty and he's got enemies because the promised land, the land of Canaan, wasn't just undeveloped land. It says the Canaanites lived in the land. And here's what I've learned is that whenever you've got a promise, there's going to be opposition. There's going to be obstacles. When you are trying to get the building, guess what? Five other people are going to be trying to get the same one. When you're trying to start a business, guess what? Everybody else is going to be uh, telling you it can't be done. 
When you decide that I want my family to come to know Jesus, guess what? The kids are going to be like, we got to do Bible study tonight? You know, you must recognize all of these obstacles are going to be there. And if we understood and knew everything that we had to face, if, if, you know, ladies, if y'all were like Sarah at an old age, and you're like, you mean to tell me I got to go and give birth? You mean to tell me I got to go at labor at 90-something? We're going to be like, uh-uh, no, sir, no, sir. But the thing is, it's going to cost us something. It's going to cost us something. And the question that we got to ask ourselves, am I willing to pay the price? Because today here, I want to answer three main questions. I want to look at a few quick questions. See, first of all, the first question is, can I trust God? Can I trust God? And the next question I want to look at is, is obedience worth it? Is it worth it? And then how do I follow God's instruction? How do I come to the place where I'm walking by faith in obedience? So let's talk about the first one. Can I, can I trust God? And the reason, you know, as we look at this, I've learned that God won't leave me to fend for myself. He won't leave me to fend for myself. Now, all of us who have children, you remember when our kids learn how to ride that bike without the training wheels. Right? We put them on the training wheels, and over time, you know, we might take one of them off. Right? And eventually we take a second one off. And the thing about it is that God, when he's teaching us how to ride, when we finally decide, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to walk by faith and I'm going to try this. I actually came across a video the other day, and, I, and my wife recorded uh, Karis when she was learning to ride her bike. And she was riding, right? And she was trying to push those pedals. And she was like, I'm a big girl. I'm a big girl. I'm a big girl. And it was the cutest little thing. But the whole time as she was trying, guess who was right behind her? Right? The person taking the video wasn't going to let her fall down. And we must recognize that when we step out on faith, God will not leave us to fend for ourselves. In other words, he starts with his hand on the, on the, on the uh, handlebars, and he's got the other hand on the seat. And we get a little bit more confident. He might take his hand off, and we start to go a little bit further. But as we start to go, he, he, we get to the place where we can finally ride on our own. But guess what? He's always got a watchful eye. And the thing I've learned is that he dispatches his angels all around me, that even when I feel like I'm riding by myself, if I start to fall, guess what? He will, put his, he, he will dispatch his angels that I will not dash my foot against the stone. And we must recognize that even in the midst of us being obedient, stepping out on faith, that his hand will never leave our lives. You got to grab hold of that, right? We got to grab hold of that. So number one, he won't leave us to fend for ourselves. So that's the first point of why we can trust God. But then on top of it, Right, God will lay out a blueprint and a roadmap for us. And the thing about it is, see, we don't use maps that much anymore, right? But my dad still probably, he still got a, you still got a map in your car, don't you? He still got a map in the back of his car. He can fold that bad boy out like this big, right? But to recognize the thing, the thing about a map is that you will follow a map, but many of us won't, fo won't follow God. And the reason that we will follow the map is because we recognize somebody has gone before us and they have charted a course. And they've already been there before. They already know where the mountains are. They already know where the valleys are. They know where everything is. So we are willing to pull out that map and look at it and say, okay, I got to take 64. I got to get on 81. I got to go over here. And we, we trust that that route is real because somebody's already walked the route. But you and I must recognize that God has already ordered your steps. And you and I must recognize that, God, we can trust the route that he lays out before us. Why? Because he's already been there before. He is he, he's, he's omniscient. He knows everything that's going on around us. He is all powerful. And we must recognize that in his power, we can trust his plan. But if, you see, we, we got to have enough faith, enough faith to, to know that God will guide me. God will guide me. He orders my steps. He orders my steps. And all the things that I face are working together for my good. So guess what? I can trust God. So number one, he will guide me. But then on top of that, he will give me what I need along the way. He will provide everything that I need. Right? He will give me all the stuff. But then on top of that, God will guard me. If I start to fall, guess what? He's going to guard me. If, if, if I start to struggle, he's going to catch me. And we must recognize that he has ordered our steps. And even the things that don't look good will still work for good. And the thing we must recognize that he is a provider. He has given us everything that we need to make it through this journey. Yeah. Now, I, other thing, the other thing I want you to grab hold of, the why you can trust God, why you can trust God. You see, if God keeps the earth spinning on its axis, 
And you look here, it's a fancy diagram, and I'm not going to pretend to tell you about the tilt of the earth. I don't want to give you a headache of understanding, you know, how it, it circles and orbits uh, the sun. And we don't want to get to the place of trying to figure out, you know, why the why the, 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 the tide is the way it is, why the seasons are the way they are. But we must trust God enough to know that if he can keep the earth spinning at just the right angle, at just the right timing, if he can cause the rain to come at just the right time, if he can keep food growing according to his infinite knowledge, guess what? He can keep your family. Guess what? He will keep his promise that pertains to your life. And you and I must recognize that I can't have a more faith in my meteorologist, more faith in my doctor, more faith in my degree than I have in the one who controls the, the universe in the palm of his hand. If he closed the lilies of the field, guess what? He'll take care of your light bill. If, 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 if he can change the, the, the hearts and minds of men, guess what? He can change your supervisor. Guess what? You must understand that if he keeps all of that stuff in his perfect wisdom, he can handle my issues. He can handle what I'm going through. And I can step out and walk by faith and realize that through my step, God's going to work it out. So you can trust God. You, 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 you can trust him. You can take him at his word. And, you know, I had an experience literally on Friday night where I took somebody at their word and it let me down. You see, on Friday, we went out and we, I ordered some food. And I went to the restaurant and I placed my order online. I went to pick it up. And it didn't quite look right in the bag. And the thing is, they usually put it uh, in a, and I'm not going to tell you the restaurant because I don't want to give them a bad review. Uh, but, but the thing about it is, they gave me a container, and it didn't look like the container usually looks. So they gave me the container, and I said, excuse me, ma'am, I ordered a bowl, but that looks like a box. And she said, oh, we don't do bowls anymore, but all the food is in there. So the lady gave me her word. She said it was in there. And, and like a genius, I decided I'm not going to check the bag. So I didn't check the bag, and I got all the way home. And when I got home, guess what? The box didn't have what she said it had in it. And we must realize that there are people that we can't take at their word. But guess what? I can always take God at his word. Because she told me the food was in the bag. And then I got home and it wasn't in the bag. So I, I had to go all the way back. And when I got back, I said, excuse me, man, what you told me was not true. And she went and she tried to replace the few things that were wrong. And I said, no, ma'am. Could you just replace the whole meal? Because I didn't pay for cold food. I paid for hot food. And we must recognize, that's a whole other sermon in itself. Uh, but the thing is, right, we must recognize that we can take God at his word. You can trust God. You can trust God. But then the next question that we want to really dig into is, is obedience worth it? Is it worth it? You, you see, because it's like I was talk, talking about, yeah, they replaced my food. But the time and the inconvenience, I didn't even want it anymore. I was like, I don't even have a taste for this now, right? And, and you must recognize the question is, it's going to cost us something, but the question is, is it worth it? Is it worth it, right? And the thing is, I've learned is that there will always be a reason. There will always be a reason to stay where you are, to stay in a bad situation, to stay in doubt, to stay in fear, right? There's always a reason to quit. There's always a reason to doubt. There is always a reason to fear. Take your pick. It's a full menu of any and everything you want. Excuses, obstacles, uh, setbacks, things that even get, getting up this morning. How many of y'all had many reasons of why you could not have come to church today? There was all these things that popped in your head. It's cold outside. My, my back hurt a little bit. The game's going to come on at one. I got to cook this chicken. There's always a reason to not step out. Even when they would come telling, hey, telling you, hey, lift up your hands, you're like, I don't know. You know, they're telling you to worship, like, I don't know. You know, but we must recognize there is always a reason. And like I said, obedience is going to cost you something. It's going to cost you comfort. It, it, it's going to cost you, see, because Abraham could have just chilled, right? He could have just stayed right where he was at. He's like, man, I, I got, I'm, I'm good. I'm old, right? I, I'm, you know, I don't need all that. Oh, God, you know, at the end of the day, it's comfortable where I'm at. You know, Sarah's happy. I, I don't want to go explain to her we moving. I, I don't want to have to explain to her we're going to have a kid. I, I don't want to do that, God. But recognize that obedience is going to cost you something. It's going to cost you comfort. It's going to cost you what is familiar. It's going to cost you even the approval of people. Any of us who have ever stepped out on faith recognize there's going to be people telling you, don't do it. 
There's going to be people telling you, don't try. Don't go back to school. Don't try to work out your marriage. Don't go to counseling. Don't get in shape. Don't do any of that stuff. Why? Because there's always a reason, but it is going to cost you something. And the thing about it is that the cost, we've got to pay first. This ain't one of those things where you get all the food, and at the end, they bring out the bill. No, no, this is you got to pay before you play. And we must recognize, right, Abraham has some costs he had to pay. he got an age issue. He's got to go out into unfamiliar territory. He's got to go and live in tents for years. And we must recognize that Abraham didn't see the full promise for himself. The promise was for his children and his children's children. And on top of it, there were enemies in the land, right? We must recognize, like I said, when you decide to bid on the project, it's going to be five other people with more qualifications, with deeper pockets, and they, their uncle and their cousin, they all work in the department. And we can look and say, well, you know what? That's a good old boy system, and it's no point of me even trying. But we've got to get enough faith in us to recognize that when I step, God will meet me in my step. So the question is, is it worth it, y'all? Is, is it worth it, though? Is it worth paying all, this, all these prices? Is it worth going through all of this? Is it worth being up late at night studying? Is it worth going to a counseling session? Is it worth, uh, you know, actually coming and showing up at church? Is it worth it? See, the thing about it I've learned is that even though obedience is going to cost me something, it's going to take me somewhere. And this is what I've learned is that it is worth all the trouble. It's worth all the trouble. And the thing that you must recognize is going to take you somewhere, but it is worth the cost of the qualification. You see, because when Abraham stepped out on faith and obedience, God looked and he said, you know what? I can trust him. You know what? I can bless him. Why? Because he took me at my word. He believed that I could fulfill my promise. Even when it came down to to sacrificing his son, he was willing to go that extra step. He was willing to pay that price. And God said, you know what? You're qualified. You were approved. And now I'm ready to pour out blessing into your life. So it's worth all the trouble. You see, your obedience doesn't equal your, your award. Let me say that again. Your obedience doesn't equal your award. Pastor, what do you mean? You see, God's not a one-for-one type of God. Right. And you see over here, uh, this young lady, she's, she's typing uh, numbers in and all this kind of stuff. And my wife is an accountant, you know, and, and they talk about debits and credits. And everything's got to balance out. But we must recognize that God is not a one-for-one God. And what I mean for that, by that is how does that pertain to our lives? You see, if I had some single folks in here, right, two years of living holy before marriage, Right. It would equal out to a lifetime of blessing. Recognize something. Two years of sowing into God's kingdom. Say, you know what, God, I'm going to give sacrificially. I'm going to give cheerfully. Guess what? That's multiplied into a house. It's multiplied into a car. It's multiplied into a great career. Some of y'all know exactly what I'm talking about because you put a little bit in and you got a whole lot back out. A, 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 A few years of you serving faithfully. And saying, look, even though I know you can't pay me, even though I know you're not going to recognize me, I'm going to clean the church. I'm going to come and I'm going to be in a parking lot. I'm going to serve without you, without worrying about who's going to give me something. But in the midst of that little bit of sacrifice, God now pours out faithful ministry for years and years to come. Just a little bit, a little bit, a little bit of our obedience, a little bit of our sacrifice. Guess what? It's not one for one with God. You know, my dad likes to, he's got a garden and in his garden, he will plant a seed and that seed will give you not one plant. It'll give you 10 and 20 and 30. And we must recognize that it's all worth it. Our little bit of obedience will pour out many blessings for years and years to come. The last thing I want to touch on, the last thing is how do I follow God? How we, we realize It's worth it, y'all. We realize we can trust him. We realize that it's worth it. But then the question is, how do I actually do this, Pastor? How do I do this? You see, the thing is, is that we must run when God calls us to run. So he told Abraham to leave where you are. Leave your uh, your, your, your comfort. Leave mama's house. Leave everything that you had and step forward and follow me. You see, when I was a kid, we used to play this game called red light, green light. And the thing about the game is that when when they said red light, what you had to do? You had to stop. When we say green light, what you get to do? You get to go. But the problem with some of us is when God's saying stop, we want to go. And the problem with you doing that in red light, green light is when they say stop, you decide to go. Guess what? You out. And we must recognize a few things. When God says go, when God says step out, we, that's the time to move. 
That's a, just because his voice said go, his voice said praise, his voice said worship, his voice said give, his voice said come into the house of the Lord, his voice said submit to teaching and authority, that's when we must do it. Now he's saying green light. Some of us in relationships, he was like red light, and we want to run, we're sprinting in, right? But we must recognize that there was a, there was a, a timing, there was a purpose. When we do it according to God's way, we will get God's results. Y'all want right after church, we can set up a game of red light, green light. But the thing about it, how? How do I follow? How do I follow? The thing is that obedient faith focuses on the finish line. It focuses on the finish. It doesn't get sidetracked by the obstacles. It focuses on the finish. And I remember when I was, we were building our house, and it took three and a half years to build it. And every time I was tired, every time I was weary, I kept thinking about what does move-in day look like. I kept thinking about what's Karis' room going to be like. What's the game room going to look like? All of these things. We must stay focused on the finish. When you are going through difficulties as being a single, you must focus on what God has for you. When you're going through difficulties in a marriage, you must focus on what it's going to look like when you when you're celebrating that 50-year anniversary. When you're going through uh, struggles of why I got to go to this job, you must focus on the fact that God is providing. Focus on the finish line. I was running the other day, and I said, I'm going to do something a little bit different today. I'm trying to set a, I set a goal. I want to I run a sub eight-minute mile for five miles, and I'd never done it before. But I kept focusing on what it was going to look like to look at my time and see on that time it was less than eight minutes. Well, not only did I meet it, but I beat it by 10 seconds. Why? Because I focused on the finish. And we must be at the place where we are following God, but we focus on the finish line. You see, I learned that I can sacrifice, I can suffer, I can stay the course when I focus on the finish. And the thing about it is the, the outcome, the outcome might not be immediate, but God's promise is imminent. Let me say that again. His his outcome may not be immediate. I might not see it right now. All right? Abraham didn't see it right away, did he? Right? But the promise was imminent, and our job is to be obedient and to be faithful. Be faithful. Keep serving. Keep giving. Keep sowing. Keep believing. Keep stepping forward. Why? Because the promise is imminent. God is faithful to do what he said he would do. He said that I will bring forward to completion the thing that I started. You know, and all we must recognize that all the promises of God are what? Yes, and they are amen. So the thing is, I want to give you this. How do I follow? How do I follow? Before I take my seat, how do I follow? You see, walking by faith. It says that I am willing. I'm willing to do blank because I know that God will do blank. You see, in Isaiah, it says, if you are willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. But then it says, but if you refuse and rebel, you shall be eaten by the sword for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. And this is what he spoke to Israel. But I believe the same principle applies today. If we are willing and obedient, we will eat the good of the land. So walking by having obedient faith, it means that I'm willing to work a second job so that God will send my kids to school, right? It it means I'm willing to go to counseling because I believe that God can heal my trauma. It, It says that I'm willing to get up in the morning and exercise so that God will heal my body. I am willing to study, right, so that God can open new doors in my career, How many of y'all are willing to step out on obedience because you realize that God is faithful to fulfill the thing that he promised that he would do? God's not like the the, the folks over at that restaurant I went to where they tell us one thing and they give us something else. No, no, God is faithful to his word. But we must get to the place where we follow him. I'm willing, God, to show up for small group Bible study because I believe you're going to show me something. I believe, God, that when I, when I actually stay connected, that God's got a plan for my life. See, I'm not going to try to run when it's red light time. But when, God, you say go, that's when I'm going to go. When you tell me to speak to the person in the break room about Jesus, I'm going to go and speak to him. When you tell me that it's time to step out and, and start this business, you told me five years ago, and you're saying go, but I'm still on red light. But now God is like, no, Go. Even though you don't know all of the, you don't know all the answers, even though there's obstacles in the land, there's giants, there's all these things telling you to stay, you and I must go and have obedient faith. Abraham and Sarah were willing and obedient. 
and they ate the good of the land. Not just them, but their children and their children's children and their children's 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 children. I want that kind of testimony. I want that kind of testimony when somebody hears the name Winder. They're like, oh, that, that dude loved Jesus. Uh, you know, he, he, he's, he's a... He, I don't, know, I don't know who you are, but you're one of them winders, and y'all are serious about your faith, and you following God. That's the kind of testimony I want for my kids and my kids' kids. But guess what? We've got to step out to the place where we sow and we give and we do what everything God has called us to do so that we have obedient faith. So as I get ready to close, the question, the question, the question is do you have obedient faith? Do you have obedient faith? It's not enough for us to hear a promise, to, to sing a song, to clap our hands. It's, it, it's about the step. It's about the, the feet. You see, our faith is measured by our feet. Our faith is measured by our feet. And our, our feet. And I don't know about you, but I believe God can do it all. If he can tell the, 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 the sun when to shine, the moon when to rise, the tide where to go. He set the boundaries for the land. And he tells everything, look, you're not going to go further than I allow you to. Now, I can't walk by sight. I got to walk by faith because the funny thing is God's already shown himself. He's already said Jesus. He's already created the whole, all of the heavens and the earth declare his glory. And if we just look outside for a few minutes, we will see God's hand and his faithfulness. So do you have obedient faith? And I'm closing right here. God's calling us to obedient faith. And I don't know about you, but I want my prayers and my testimony is that he was faithful and he walked by faith. You know, we, seven years ago, we started walking by faith and we had doors closing and people saying, no, you can't come here. But by faith, we kept on calling. We kept on going. We didn't stop at the nose. Because I believe you got to go through a whole lot of no's to get through your yes. And, and just because you run into no's doesn't mean it's time to stop. You got to go through no's, and those are just the people you got to get out the way. But yes may be on, on chance number 17. And I can't stop on 14. I got to keep going to 17 because that's where my finish line is. So I want to pray for you this morning. And maybe as we're praying, maybe you don't know Jesus. That's the first step. If you don't know Jesus, we want you to have an opportunity to know him as your Lord and your Savior. If you don't know him, he's come, he came, he died for sinners like you and me. And even though there's mistakes in your life and you think that's too big, you're like, well, God can't love somebody like me. We limit his power. We limit his love. He has unconditional love. That blood, that blood that shed, there is no stain that it can't remove. There's no sin that it didn't pay for. And you and I must recognize that he thought we were worth it. Even though we can't see it in ourselves, even though mama said you ain't worth it, even though aunt so-and-so said you ain't worth it, kids at school saying you ain't worth it, guess what God says today? You are worth it. And I want to call the devil the liar that he is. Because the truth is, even the apostle Paul said, he came to die for sinners of whom I am chief. You may feel like the day that you got Paul beat, the stuff you looked at, the places you went, that the wrong you've done, you may think, well, well, you know what, Pastor? There's no way. And Jesus said something on the cross. He said, it is finished. And when he said it was finished, it covered my sins, your sins, all sins. But the thing is, our faith, we're talking about obedient faith today, and the obedient faith, God's given the green light this morning. And it's time for you and I to run to him. In the midst of that green light, it's, he's knocking, he's knocking, and it's time for us to run. And his arms are wide open saying, come, fellowship with me. Come into my family. Come be my friend. I don't know about you, but I got some good friends, but none of them compare to Jesus. He's a friend that sticks closer than any brother. And he wants to have a relationship with you today. So if you want to know him, I want to pray with you. It's a very simple prayer. You just repeat the words after me, but most importantly, believe in your heart. Believe the words you say. Open your heart to accept him. He'll change your life. He'll change your destination. He'll put you in a place, and it'll be the best decision you've ever made. I want to pray this prayer, and if you want to know Jesus for yourself, I want you to pray it right along with me. It's very simple. It says, Lord, I am a sinner. Say that with me. He says, I need Jesus. I've messed up. I've made mistakes. Today I repent. 
Come into my heart. Wash me clean. I believe you died for me. I believe you paid my price. And I believe you rose from the dead. So come into my heart. Give me strength to live this life. I can't do it by myself. But I declare today, I want to do my best to live for you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hey, I got great news. If you prayed that prayer with me, if you believe it in your heart, you confess it with your mouth, guess what? You are now saved. And that's the, the best thing that could ever happen to you. Better than a lottery ticket. Better than finding an extra chicken wing in your food. It's better. I know our day might be shaking his head like, I don't know, Pastor, but guess what? It's better. It's better. And we must recognize that angels in heaven are rejoicing over your commitment today. And if you made that decision, I want you to send us a message. I want you to reach out because we want to pray with you. We want to pray for you. We want to support you in this journey. Guess what? You are not in this by yourself. So please reach out to us. We've got some resources we want to give you. We want to help you along the way. My last prayer is for those who have heard this message. You're saying, Pastor, I've been, I've been going when God said stop. And when God said go, I, I couldn't go. And I need some encouragement today. I'm ready to quit. I'm ready to give up. There's a glimmer of hope, though, Pastor, and I'm ready. I want to, but I need you to help my unbelief. I need God to help my unbelief. There's so many things telling me to give up, so many things telling me to quit. Well, guess what? I want to pray for you, and I want to challenge you to take a step of faith. So let's pray together. Father, thank you, God, for the word spoken today. Thank you for those who have heard it, God. We pray this this, uh, morning, God, that you would just help us to walk in obedient faith. We recognize, God, that we can say we believe, but our actions can tell a whole different story. God, help us to get to that place where we are willing to step out on faith, willing to When somebody calls and asks us to pray this morning, we're willing to give it a shot. When somebody calls and asks us to lead small group, we are willing to give it a chance. When when they're asking us, when we get that opportunity to apply for a new job, we're willing. We're not going to talk ourselves out of it. When we face difficulty, God, help us to be willing and obedient, trusting you to recognize, Father God, that it is worth it. So, Lord, help us, God, today to walk by faith in you. God, we believe, Lord, that by faith, it's going to get better. It might not get better tomorrow, but by faith, we're going to focus on the finish line, and we're going to keep moving forward for the glory of God. Father, this is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. And lastly, I want to encourage you, if you desire to be connected to this church as a member, please send us a message as well. We do have... Uh, We are still accepting members in BBCC. The door is not closed. Amen. But we do thank God because a few folks have actually connected with the ministry. If you desire to connect, just send us a message as well. Uh, We will walk you through that process of membership, plug you into a small group. You don't have to be a member of the church to become a member of a small group or to join one. Uh, But we are just looking forward to what God's going to do in your life. I have been so blessed by the testimonies of seeing people plugging in a small group, growing, and and actually becoming what God has called them to do. So we are just so grateful for that. Let's give God a hand clap of praise uh, real quick. Amen, amen. I pray that you are blessed by the message, blessed by the worship today, blessed by the fellowship. It is so good to see y'all. Amen, it is so good to see y'all. Last but not least, before we get ready to close, uh, we want to encourage you to give as the Lord has placed on your heart. Uh, here, for those who are here uh, physically in the building, we do have an offering box in the back. Those who are tech savvy, who are giving online, our number is up here. You can text to give. You can also give to the church website. Here at BBCC, we do not tell you what to give. We tell you how to give. And that how to give is cheerfully and sacrificially. Remember, like we talked about, God doesn't do one for one. The Bible lets us know that if we, if we sow sparingly, we will reap sparingly. But if we sow bountifully, we will reap bountifully. It says, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over will God pour into our bosoms. So obedient faith says, God, I'm going to give to you for your glory. And I'm just so grateful because through this pandemic, financially, we haven't missed a beat. Through this pandemic, he has supplied. So I thank God for that. 
I thank God for that. I haven't, we haven't lost a night of sleep worrying about how we're going to keep the lights on. Church sat empty for about a year and a half. Cobwebs and spiderwebs and all these kind of things. But God in his faithfulness, everything kept on moving. Amen. Amen. So I thank God for that. So we're going to get ready to be dismissed. Uh, I pray God will bless you coming in, going out. Pray he'll bless you on the job, bless you in the city, bless you in the field, bless your mama and them, your auntie and them, your cousin and them, and make his name great in your life. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Thank you all for, for being here. Connect a small group this week. God's going to do great things. God bless you. That concludes today's service. You are dismissed.